Hey guys, welcome back. You might notice that we're filming somewhere a little bit different today. That's because my two little boys are out in the kitchen causing a ruckus. And for you guys to be able to hear me, we're doing it from my bedroom. So, new scene anyway. Wow. I'm filming this video on the day of its release, which I don't usually do. But it occurred to me when I posted last night, and it being Infant Mental Health Awareness Week, that I have to focus and I want to focus on infant mental health. So today's video is probably one that I've been wanting to do and looking forward to do to doing for quite some time. It's going to be talking about controlled crying. And it's not what you think it is because being a sleep consultant, you're probably thinking that that's how I roll, that that's what I do. That's how we get babies and toddlers to sleep. Wrong. Watch on to find out what I think about controlled crying and what I think about helping babies and toddlers find sleep in a way that supports their mental health. But a quick intro from me before we dive in. My name's Jen. I'm from jenniferbutler.com.au and I'm an early parenting specialist that's dedicated to helping mums enjoy the simple joys and intimate early days, months and years of parenthood because you know what? They're going to pass us by like that. So my jam is about allowing you to enjoy them by helping you to get to know, understand and support your baby and toddler. I release new videos once a fortnight on a Tuesday. So if you want to know about when they're released, head on over to my website, www.jenniferbutler.com.au. Sign up to my mailing list. I send you an awesome clean sleeping guide when you do. So it's definitely worth your while. And you know what? If you're watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe as well because then, and the bell, don't forget the bell because then you're notified of when I release my new videos once a fortnight on a Tuesday. All right, let's dive into this video. First of all, I want to define what controlled crying actually is. So there's actually a couple of ways to do controlled crying. So it's controlled crying or there's modified controlled crying. Controlled crying is where you put your baby or toddler to sleep at night, you bid them good night, you close the door, you don't go back in. So they could cry multiple times or for hours on end, you know, during the night. And the idea is that you simply give them space, a lot of space, like a really long time, like all night to settle themselves. So that's controlled crying. Um, and the idea is, is that they learn to settle themselves because, well, no one's coming. Modified controlled crying is where you do timed intervals away from your baby or toddler and it increases in time away. And it's the same principle is that your baby or toddler will learn how to settle themselves if they're given that space alone. First and foremost, let me say that there are families out there who have done these methods, who love the crap out of their child, but for whatever reason, usually it's their own emotional distress related to their baby or toddler not sleeping. Or it's the only way that they knew how. That's how they're helping their baby sleep. So it's important to talk about, you know, that for parents who have done that, you're awesome parents still. It's We're given what we know how to do. And so the thing I find too, being a sleep consultant, working in the sleep industry, is there is a huge misunderstanding that if you want to improve the way your baby or toddler sleeps, that you must do controlled crying or modified controlled crying. My stance on it is that there is so many other ways that you can help your baby or toddler to improve their sleep without any need for sleep training, first of all. And second of all, if there is needed to be some um, changes around settling, it can be done in a very gentle way that supports your baby and toddlers mental health. There's a wide variation of when babies and toddlers sleep through the night and also reasons for why they wake overnight. The issues with doing things like controlled crying where you just are leaving your baby or toddler to sort themselves out is that we are ignoring potential physical needs but also we're ignoring that emotional the emotional connection that babies and toddlers are seeking. Usually as babies and toddlers become more mobile, their need to be with us as parents is stronger and higher. And so 
a t at sleep. It's a time of separation for them, just like it is dropping them off at daycare or dropping them off at the parents. It's a time of separation. So there's varying degrees of how babies and toddlers handle periods of separation. Um, and that comes down to temperament, which is something that's inbuilt in your baby. But the thing is putting a cookie cutter approach of controlled crying or modified controlled crying means that the babies that don't cope, the babies and toddlers that don't cope with separation as well as others are going to really struggle with that. And we want to aim to build a strong, secure attachment between mother and child and parents and child. And so making sure that we're responsive to our baby and toddler's needs is going to be our number one priority in making sure that we're respecting their emotional world and making sure that they're going to grow up with, you know, a good mental health and healthy mental health. So like I said, if you're watching this and you have done controlled crying or modified controlled crying, this isn't about a guilt trip, but this video is directed at people who haven't yet looked into or are starting to think that perhaps they do need a little bit of help in improving their baby and toddler's sleep. And so this video is to, I guess, identify that there are other options. You don't have to use controlled crying. And the best thing we can do for our baby and toddler is to teach them that they can trust that when we go, we are going to come back. Because that's the premise of why they get so upset at bedtime is that that separation is, is occurring. So rather than teaching self-settling, Let's look at it from a baby's and toddler's point of view of how can we teach you to trust that it's okay to settle to sleep knowing that mum or dad or whoever is your carer is going to be responsive to you if you need that support. So I hope that video has helped you understand a little bit about what controlled crying is and to, I guess, understand that it's not the way and the only way that you have to use to get your baby and toddler to sleep. And it is possible to help your baby and toddler sleep while still respecting their emotional world and their mental health. That is like, if you can take away one thing from this video, it's that, that you can have one without the other, but it's just about finding someone who is going to help you get to from point A to point B in a way that suits you and respects your baby's emotional world. So that's all for me. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you share it. Make sure you tag friends if you think it's a good one. Um, and if you're on YouTube, then subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Do all the things. Comment below. Just do all the things, okay? <laughs> I'll be back here in another fortnight with a new video, so I will catch you then. Go. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Woo! Woo! If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Woo! Woo! If you're happy and you know it, and you really are to show it. Mum. Yeah? Oh! Who is it? Oh, no. Oh, no. Say bye. Bye. Have a good day. Good day. <laughs>